apparently I'm live. I'm a little bit early, so if there's anybody there, please just say hello in the chat because I'd love to know I'm not sitting here on my own. Oh, hello. I can see people, lots of people. That's lovely. You're going to have to excuse me looking to the, to the side all the time. My camera's in front of me and my screen's to the left. Um, but I'm only going to be doing the introductory bit um, like this, and then I'm going to be moving the camera over the desk so that you can see what we're working on. But I think I just need to wait a little while because I think I'm just a bit before four o'clock. Um, so, oh, Amy's there. So we're not quite ready. Um, so I think Iris was just finishing up. Yeah, it looks like I've got about one minute to go. So let me see who we've got here. Oh, good morning, Susan Melkowitz. Good morning, where you are. Um, so it's four o'clock in the afternoon here in the UK. And my office is in the garden and it's been a hot day here. So the sun's been on it all day. So I'm sweltering. Um, but probably compared to where some of you come from, this is this is probably a cold day. So who have we got? Carol, hello. Uh, oh, Miami, crikey, that must be a hot one. Um, Netherlands. So Netherlands is probably an hour ahead of me. Let's have a look. I'm going to put these on. Lymington. Oh, Lymington. Lovely sailing place Sally's from. Or sailed from Lymington. Uh, Marilyn's there from Texas. Lisa says keep hydrated. I will do. I've got my water, but a good tip. Thank you very much. Kansas, North Carolina, Connecticut. 5 p.m. in Netherlands. Yes, I thought it might be. And Oklahoma. Gosh, people from all over the place. How lovely. And it's strange because I'm just sitting here in, in the middle of kind of Devon, in the, um, right on the south coast of the UK, and these people from everywhere, and it's, it's amazing. And lots of you. How brilliant. Yes, Jane Fowler, so many people from everywhere. <laughs> so I'm guessing it must be getting close to being four o'clock. I'm just waiting for Amy to kind of give me the nod, I think. Karen McCoy, you're right, the garden is a lovely place to create. And I've only just moved to this studio, actually. I um, moved house about six months ago and had a temporary studio uh, whilst we got this studio at home ready. So I only moved in here a week ago, which is why sort of behind me you can see there's blank walls and things sort of just sitting on cupboards waiting to be put onto the walls properly. Um, but it's great to have my own space again, even if it is a little bit hot today. So I'm just looking out for Amy. Great. OK, we're ready to go, I think. It must have gone four o'clock. So um, my official welcome. Thank you to everybody for joining me. Um, I'm Jane Chip. And I don't know if all of you have seen lots of the other um, live sessions, but I'm going to just assume you haven't and just give you a bit of information because there might be some of you that don't know what this is all about. So Wonderlust Live is an introduction to Wonderlust 2024 which is a year long program of art journaling sessions. So there's going to be 49 lessons from loads of different teachers, all with different styles, showing you different things. And this week is just a sample of it really. So there's been a number of us teachers who have done live sessions and there's been some recorded ones and there's been some chats and things to give you a taste of what the whole thing's about. And there's some early bird tickets. So if you get an early bird ticket, you get the whole year's course for just $99. After that, it goes to the full price, which is $175. So if you would like to take advantage of that, if you look in my description beneath the video, there's my link and that will take you to where you can enroll. And I'll be ever so grateful because um, it's an affiliate link. And so I get a little bit of money from it to buy more old photographs, which is what most of my money tends to go on. So um, I think that's probably all I need to say on that. So I'm just going to tell you a tiny bit about myself and then we're going to sort of turn the camera and start looking at the actual lesson. Um, so 
if you've seen my Instagram at all, which is at Jane Chip, you'll know that my thing is working with old photographs, ephemera, um, things that have been, that have had a life before. And I love to use those in my art and sort of give them a new life and use them to tell stories. So about uh, two years ago, I wrote a book. Can we see that? I don't know if this is back to front. On my camera, on my screen, it all looks back to front. Can somebody tell me, does the, read, does the writing look back to front? Or can you read that? Hmm, somebody. It's fine. Oh, great. Lovely. Thank you. I don't know why it does that. It's really confusing. Anyway, so um, I wrote a book with my very good friend, Jack Ravi, um, which was all about making art with old photographs. So it's fair to say I'm quite obsessed with this. Um, and it's the mainstay of my art journaling practice. So there are very few pages in my art journals that don't use old photographs or ephemera in some way. So um, I'm going to turn the camera. I'm sorry, it's kind of old school. I'm going to manually move the camera and stick it into this thing that looks like it's about to grab my head. Um, and then we can look through some journals and then get stuck into the lesson. That's not work very well. It worked much better in the practice. Right, let's see. Okay. So, um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the sort of journals that I work in, first of all. So some of them are kind of regular size. Um, they're nearly all handmade, but I also do some tiny ones. So for me, it's about the process of making things rather than a kind of the, the format, really. Um, so I'll flick through a couple of these first. Um, this is an altered book. It's a really nice book. It's got a kind of canvas cover, um, which was great because I could stitch into it. I can't remember what it was, some sort of travel book, I think. Um, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing because there's loads of it, but you can see it's very kind of tatty. I think it would be fair to say, very organic. Um, and it has a particular colour palette. Um, you'll also, as you go through these, see that I tend to use neutral colours, greens and blues, um, quite a lot. So this page, I just wanted to show this. I'm going to be showing you examples of how I use photos. Um, this is one that I've done kind of minimal alteration to, but it's it's enough um, to make the boy really stand out and just to sort of make it just look more than a photograph, really. Uh, and there's some stitch in that one. And this one here, um, again, not done a huge amount to the photograph, um, painted behind it and then sort of made what was a frame of a photograph into a kind of archway, which just sort of brings the people into the journal and, and makes it again, more than a photograph. So my aim when I'm working with photographs in journals is that I'm not trying to make a photo album. That's the absolute last thing that I want. I want these photographs to kind of work in the journal and to tell a story um, because my art primarily is about telling stories, whether that's stories about myself or stories about the imagined lives of the people in the photographs. What else have I got in here? Um, yeah, so this, again, just sort of doing things to incorporate the photograph into the page on this one. I've used these photographs, sorry, uh, flowers in this picture at the bottom and kind of trailed them up into this and made this really quite drab photo into something really sort of delicate and, and really pretty. Um, this one here was a, a, just a woman in a sort of business suit sitting down. I've got her set in this kind of dreamy uh, background with this gold sun behind her. This one, again, I've painted the background out 
and kind of set her into this snowy scene, this little girl that's all sort of wrapped up warm with her, her bonnet on and gloves and everything. And again, this one, I've cut the figure out of that, but, and I did it because I just really love the shape. It's such a kind of typical, if you like, little girl shape with a little dress and the sort of the bobbed hair. Um, and I popped her down there. But I really like the kind of mystery that you get of removing the subject from the photo. And again, sort of setting it into this very kind of floral feminine setting. And uh, this one, um, couple walking down a high street and I just sort of added this umbrella, put the rain in and it just again tells a, a story about them. Somebody's asking, where do I find my photos? Um, do you use Gutenberg or Library of Congress sites? Oh, I don't, but I will look those up because that sounds like a really nice tip. Thank you. Um, I get photos primarily from flea markets, um, auctions. Uh, one of the, the ladies in here, Jane Fowler, that's in the, um, in the audience, she and I go to auctions sometimes and we fertile around in boxes under desks at um, house clearance sites and sometimes get some wonderful treasures. So um, those sort of places, I sometimes buy them on eBay um, and occasionally on Instagram. So other people that work with found photographs sometimes sell them. So if you use the hashtag found photos, um, you should be able to find the people that are selling them and sort of keep an eye on those. Um, but eBay is uh, is a really good source for them. Um, somebody else said, do I use family photos? I'm going to talk about that in a minute when we get to look at the photos that we're going to use. Um, the answer in short is yes, sometimes. If I'm working on a piece which is about my family, um, I use family photos. Most of the time I use photos of strangers um, and that's because I think I can kind of let my imagination go more when it's when it's strangers because I don't know anything about their stories. I'm going to quickly show you this one. This is a tiny little art journal that I made and this one actually is um, using some family photos. So this is uh, my grandparents, my grandmother, my grandfather's eyes, my grandfather and my grandmother's eyes. Um, and this is called As Long As We're Together. And there's a, a, a big story that goes behind that. Um, they had to leave Lithuania as refugees, um, leave everything behind. But as long as they were together, that was what mattered. So it's just a kind of cute little treasure. Um, so these tiny little art journals that I make, you know, these are all using photos of strangers. Um, and I love this format. And you can just keep working into these and adding more and more detail. But you will see that, you know, this is primarily black and white and sepia. There's not a lot of colour in that one. And I think this one was the same. Yeah. But again, really interesting sort of cutting out some of the photos, which is just great because it's very obviously um, a person in a deck chair and he's popped up there. And again, lots of negative space. It just makes it really interesting. So um, if Amy is able to, she puts my website in the notes at the side, which is www.janechip.art. You can see more about these sort of the different types of little journals and things that I make if you wanted to have a look. OK, um, what I've got here, this is my current journal. So I just highlighted this page which um, is a photo where I've blanked out loads of the detail, added some collage on top, painted onto her clothes, and it kind of looks a bit like an oil painting now. It's really, you know, the, the um, clothes really stand out, and then I've added these birds coming in as well. So that's a quick flip through of some of the ways that I use photos in journals. Where can I get rid of that? Um, these are two journals that I'm working on at the moment. So they're kind of a pair, really. Um, I've made them in the same way. They've both got this gorgeous little leather cord. 
and it's this one that I'm going to work in today. So once again, I've used a photo, but I've blended it in. So that's what this whole session today is about. Um, it's called blending in. And it's about using photographs in ways that elevate them, um, that makes them artworks, that they don't just look like they're kind of photos in a photo album or that have just been plunked on the page, that they, they become part of the page. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I really love to do. So, um, is there anything else I need to tell you before we get started? I don't think so. Is there any questions? Let's have a look. Um, no, I think we're good. If anybody has questions, if you can type in capitals, because then it's going to stand out. And when I just glance at the screen, I'll be able to see if there's a question. I'll be able to answer that easier than just trying to sort of look through. So... What we're going to do first is we're going to create a background. So my journals, um, these are homemade. They're bundles of different types of ephemera um, that I've stitched together and bound into a book. So I'm going to use two pages that are sort of similar size so we can work on a, a double page spread. So I'm going to use these two pages. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a background of collage pieces. So sort of similar to what you're seeing here, I've got these different bits of collage that are going to form the base of the page. So I've got all sorts of ephemera here. And what I was looking for when I was getting this together is pieces, they're all sort of, you know, whitey, creamy, beigey colours but there's lots of different shades. So it looks really interesting um, when you create this kind of patchwork on your page because it's not all the same. You've got different textures, different tones, um, and it makes it look really interesting. So I've got all sorts of different bits. Um, this is really nice. I don't know if you can see very well. It's got like a spider's web pattern on it. It's one of the sheets that came out of um a photo album you know the kind of glassine stuff um, that goes between pages in old photo albums and that's really nice to collage with oh i've got a few questions let me just flip to those how do i bind my journals so this was um three or four signatures that i've stitched through let me find a center somewhere if i can Okay, so there's a the centre there that's stitched through and then I've taped them all together and I've taped them into the back here with some micropore tape and then I've glued some canvas around the spine. Um, other questions. Do you ever use transparent links to colour the black and white? Oh, inks. Um, not ink so much. I use some dyes, um, some, uh, where are they? I'm not sure what they're called actually, Koinor, um, Koinor hard, Heartmuth. Um, these, they look like watercolours, but they're actually dyes. Um, so I sometimes use those to cover photographs because like an ink, um, it soaks into the photograph without sort of adding any texture. So they're quite nice. <laughs> Uh, if you use a real photo, what kind of product hold on that paper? I wonder if Natasha means what sort of things would stick to the photo, um, in which case um, acrylic paints do, gesso sticks to it. If you try to, to paint onto a photo and it doesn't stick, go over it with some clear gesso first because that will make anything stick. It adds a kind of slight grittiness, a kind of toothiness um, to any surface that then you can put other um, media onto. And is there anywhere other than Amazon to buy the book in the US? Um, no, Jennifer, there isn't uh, at the moment. Um, you can get a digital copy to download from um, our website, which is artfulmemoriesbook.com. But in terms of hard copies, it is only Amazon, I'm afraid. 
what was the tape? The tape, uh, who was that? Oh, that's Tracy from the Mermaid Co. Hello, Tracy. It's micropore tape. Um, it's the sort of stuff that you use or that medics use to stick you know, cotton wool to you if you've had a blood test or whatever. Um, it's It becomes almost visible and it's incredibly strong and it lies very flat so you can collage over it without really seeing it. I use it loads because it's it's really strong. It's great. Okay, right. So we're going to crack on now and collage, make our collage base, if I can find those pages again. There we are. There we go. Right. So I'm just going to grab a few of my bits of paper and just sort of cut out some squares, rectangles, various different bits that I'm going to use to make the collage base. Emily says she's used pit artist pens successfully to colour photos. Pit artist pens, I don't think I've tried those. I'm going to, I'm going to have to do this. I'll wrap that down. And I do use some pieces of paper here that have got bits of writing on um, because it makes it interesting, but I don't want the writing to kind of take over. So it needs to be fairly subtle. But what I will do, so once I've created the collage base, if there's any bits that I think are too dark or a kind of too overpowering for the, the collage, I can add a little bit of um, gesso onto them just to sort of tone them down a bit. I love this transparent paper. I think that was also from um, the fly sheets on um, a photo album. It's lovely. Comes in all sorts of different shades, depending on how old the photo album one. You know, this is gorgeous. It's really old and kind of got a bit crusty around the edges. And the more aged, the better, in my opinion. I've got a couple of bits here that have got a slightly sort of bluey tone. Um, I love the, these sort of faded, kind of pastely colours. Um, so I shall add some little bits of that in. That's probably a bit too much type. So your yeah, ephemera, if you're if you don't have stacks of this, you know I've got lots of this very old paper. Alternatives are to use some papers and tea dye them so you can get some different shades um you can download some fake ephemera if you like so some scans of pieces of ephemera that um you know people have scanned in and sell as digital downloads so if you were to look on etsy you would find lots of people who sell digital downloads of really lovely ephemera that you can then print out and it looks like the real deal this is lovely. This is a bit of an old book cover. And these marks, this is called foxing. Um, I'm not sure what causes it. I wonder if it's damp, maybe. I don't know what it is that causes the foxing on old books, but I absolutely love it. I think I've gone a bit over the top here. I've probably got way too much. But I'm also going to just get a bit of this. This is, um, it's an old newspaper. And you can see it's absolutely dropping to bits. And it's lovely. I love the colours and I love the texture of it. It's the Victoria Beach Herald, Manitoba. Anybody here from Manitoba? I think it's from the 1950s. I can't find a date on it, but I often use, oh, sorry, 1943. Right, get a bit of that. So it's shedding bits everywhere. It's very, very fragile. Right. So that's going to do, I'm going to pop the rest of that just to one side for now. I 
and then just start creating a collage base. So I've got some Mod Podge. Um, I tend to use this for most things, um, particularly collage wise. If I'm gluing a photo in, it depends how um, stiff the photo paper is. Sometimes I'll use a glue stick or a bit of matte gel um, or sometimes some double sided tape um, like that. I use that a lot um, because it's just really strong and it's an instant bond if it's something that I think might not stick very well. So I've got this beautiful page here, which it's a shame I'm going to cover it up, but it's just not the colours that I want at all for this piece of art, this journal page. Oh, shall I move the camera then? Sorry if I'm making you all feel a bit seasick if the camera's bobbing around. Oh, somebody said they lived there before. Was that Manitoba? Jane, I can't see without my glasses. Jamie? I think. Oh. Right, so I'm just drying my brush off a little bit. And then I'm just going to start layering up some of these bits of ephemera. What I want is just to make a really interesting base. I've got this old book that I'm going to use um, to do my gluing on. I'm kind of used to doing these sort of things as recordings and I normally obviously re record it in real time and then speed it up so that you don't have to sit and watch me gluing every individual piece of paper. But today, we're with me on time, so you're all going to have to watch me gluing every single piece of paper. But hopefully, some of you are gluing at the same time. So I'm kind of fairly random in the way that I'm placing these pieces. I'm overlapping them and I'm trying to mix up the pale and the darker shaded pieces of paper. Um, you know, I don't need to put a huge amount on here because this is really nice. It's quite pale anyway, and it's got some lovely foxy marks, but I don't want a whole side looking quite so regular. So I am going to cover it with other bits of ephemera. I'm just being careful when I'm gluing across the centre of this double page spread, just sort of keep an eye on it so that I'm making sure that the paper is going into the fold so it doesn't split when I open, when the page is, is wide open. I'm getting some very kind comments that um, people don't mind sitting and watching me slowly glue pieces of paper together. It is a restful thing to do on a, a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday morning, depending on where you are. I went for a bike ride today, which was absolutely beautiful. And the good thing is I have an electric bike, so I was able to cheat on the hills where my husband had to use his legs. So you can see I'm not paying, you know, a huge amount of attention to where I'm placing them. I am being fairly random, um, just, just making sure that I'm not putting two pieces exactly the same on top of each other. Uh, there's a question from Brenda. I don't know, Amy, if you can answer that. Will the Wonderlust Live 2023 videos be included with Wonderlust 2024? I don't know the answer to that. I'm hoping maybe if Amy is there or Kasia, 
somebody could perhaps answer that. If not, we will get an answer to you. Just a little bit of this handwriting in. I love the handwritten bits. This was an old um, book of minutes from some sort of committee. Um, so this is dated 1900. It's a committee that took place on May the 16th, 1900. It's 123 years later. It's still in the light of day again. And lots and lots of people are seeing it. Isn't that amazing that this document that's, you know, been forgotten for more than a century suddenly has a purpose and that's kind of one of the reasons that I really love using old ephemera um, it's just a real very direct connection to history um, and it's it's not big history you know it's not sort of world history it's the, the history of everyday people of the the little things that make up your everyday life and that most of us can relate to much more than enormous world events or royal family kind of events so i think it's much much more much easier to understand and to empathize and put yourself in the position of these people whose ephemera it is that we're using right so that's all covered and I'm really pleased that I've got a nice kind of fairly even um, covering. That bit there looks a little bit big. Um, maybe I'll put something else just to break that up a little bit. Let's put another little bit in there. I don't want to hide that. I like that number showing. So I'm going to stick it off the bottom and just wrap it around the other side. Okay. Right, so that's the base created. So I can put that just to one side for a second. I don't think I used that lovely piece, did I? Piece from Manitoba. Let's just use a little bit of that because I do love it. It's so crunchy. It drops to bits when the glue goes on it because it is so fragile. Right, where do I need a dark bit? Mm. Maybe just put it up there. Again, a bit of it can wrap around the other side. Okay, right. I'm trying to keep tidy. So that's the base done. So next, I'm going to have a look at some photos. Oh, look, the sun's just come out and just lit up my journal how lovely so we kind of touched on this a little bit at the start um, about what photos I use um, and I know one of the things that people often have problems with with photos is whether you use the originals or you make copies and there's obviously there's no right or wrong answer it's entirely up to you um, what I've done here is just, I've got a few originals and some copies of those originals. So this beautiful group shot here uh, and a copy of it. And then this one, these fairly well-to-do looking people, I'm guessing from the probably mm, 30s or 40s, judging by the clothes. Uh, so that's the original and that's a copy. So sometimes the colours change slightly when you take a copy, depending on your printer. Um, but what you can definitely see is that this has got this sort of slightly aged look. It's a bit yellowed. This has come out looking very pristine and, and looks much more like a modern photo. 
um, this here, um, that's the original, that's a copy that I've taken. And one of the things that I like to do if I'm going to use a copy is try to age it. Um, so on this one, I've used a deckle edge cutter, um, which is a bit like a guillotine. I've got one here, I'll show you. This was my dad's. Uh, my dad used to develop his own photos. Um, so this, it's like a guillotine. Let me just find something to show you. So it cuts this edge and it's this is specifically for photographs. So it is it's doing the job that it was designed for. But I recognise that not everybody has one of those. I inherited it. But you can get all sorts of scissors that create deckled edges. Um, so if you're using a copy, you can age it. You can use some scissors to put a deckled edge on and that instantly makes it look a lot older. So the times when I would use copies rather than an original, um, quite often, if it's, if it's some family photos which are irreplaceable, um, I tend to use copies. Um, partly because I've got three siblings and I don't think it's fair that I would use photos that are precious to all of us in the family, but I want to make art that tells my family story so i do want to use the, the images so in those cases i would often make copies um or if i'm making a piece of uh, a, a journal page and i'm kind of experimenting and i don't want to use a very precious photo in case my experimentation doesn't work out i perhaps practice um on a copy and then when i'm happy with what i'm doing possibly use the original so there's ways of aging them. So if you wanted to make copies and you didn't want them to look brand new and shiny, you can age them. So if I put these to one side and show you this one. So that's the original. This lights a bit. I've got all sorts of curtains and contraptions up to try and stop the glare on the desk, but hopefully it's not disturbing you too much. That's the original. That's a copy that I've done nothing to. And this is a copy that I've had a go at it with some tea solution. I've kind of creased it up a bit and I've put some distress ink around the edges. So very quickly, you can make things look much older. So I tend to use the actual tea bag. This is tea that's been sitting there all day. And like I say, it's four o'clock here. It's been there since about eight o'clock this morning, so it's well and truly brewed. Um, so I dab it on, and the longer you leave it, the more staining you get. And if I get a piece of kitchen roll, and I can just dab that and see whether it's stained it enough. So that's left a really nice stain. Um, I actually like this when it's kind of blobby looking, but on this one, um, I, I put a bit of tea onto a cloth and sort of dabbed it on um, to get a more, more coverage and less blobby. Um, but I love that. And then I can just go around it with a little bit of distressing. This is... Um, Ranger distressing in walnut stain and just kind of fold a bit. You could even you could have a bit of a sandpaper on an edge, rough it up a little bit, put a bit of ink on. And very quickly, you can start to get it look much more like an original, very old photo. Oh, I've got a question there from, look, oh gosh, my eyesight, uh, Delina. Uh, do you use photocopy paper to make your copies on or regular print paper? Um, this is photo paper. So it comes out, it's a slightly glossy. This is an HP photo paper. It's very cheap. Because I'm going to put loads of media on top of my photos, I don't spend you know more than I have to on the actual paper at all. Cheapest you can get is absolutely fine. I do like to have a matte paper, but I've not found one... Um, that's 
that's affordable really. So this is a, this is quite a glossy paper. Okay, so that's how I go about aging photos. So I'm going to choose which photo to use in this journal. Um, and I want to just think about the scale of it really, because I absolutely love this woman here, but she's quite tiny in relation to the rest of my journal page, because what I want to do is I'll paint out the background and there's not going to be very much left really. So, oh, this is the lady look that I used on the cover. Gorgeous photo. And I put a few dots on her headscarf for her. So what I'm going to use is part of this photo. Um, I think I'm going to use this woman here. So I'm going to cut her out, first of all, and then age the photo a bit and then we're going to add some paint and stuff and I need to get a move on because it's 22 and we've only got 20 minutes left so I'm going to cut her out and I'm not going to worry about cutting this other lady because I'm going to be painting over that anyway so it doesn't matter that there's going to be a bit of her showing and I'll keep these bits because I'll use these in other journals. She's got gorgeous lace up shoes. They look gorgeous, but I bet they're an absolute pain to wear. So I'm just going to do this decal edge cutting. I mean, it might get covered up. But the bits that don't get covered up are going to look really authentic because of the decal edge. Okay. So next I'm going to get some gesso. You could use gesso, white gesso or um, white acrylic paint. And I'm very roughly and very quickly going to paint the background out. So I'm just painting up to the edge. And it's going on quite smeary because there's some water in my paintbrush, so it's kind of diluting the gesso a little bit but I'm perfectly happy for it to look quite patchy that's that's absolutely how I want it to look if you find that your paint or your gesso doesn't stick very well like I say get some see-through gesso some clear gesso because that will make the surface um, able to accept any media. Okay, so very roughly painted out the background. And the next thing that I'm going to do, I've got some big gesso fingerprints on there that I wasn't trying to do, but never mind. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a bit of colour. So I don't tend to paint the whole image. The coat is very dark on here, so I'm not going to try and paint over that because it's just going to be really difficult to cover that. But I'm going to just give her a, a coloured dress. So I've got a lovely bit of green there and that one is Windsor and Newton olive green and this is Windsor and Newton cobalt turquoise light but it was a purely random selection I just grabbed a couple of paints that I like the look of um, so just choose anything that you like you're really just painting somebody's clothes after all 
I'm just going to add a little bit of that green to the olive so it's not quite as olivey. Just brighten it up a little bit. There we go. And then I'm just going to paint her dress. Add a little bit more green there though. The aqua colour in. So you can see I'm really being very rough and ready with this. It's really just about adding a bit of colour. Okay. So now I'm going to stick her in the journal. And I'm going to use some of the um, tape simply for speed, actually. Um, I know I didn't put it on the supplies list, so you may not have any, um, but I just want it to be sticking down quickly because I am against the clock. So I'm going to stick a bit of tape there. Oh, now I've got to try and peel this backing off without the tape coming off. There we go. Okay, so she's stuck in. So this is where I'm feeling it looks like it's kind of plonked on the page because it's a different colour to the background. Um, you know, the white is a lot brighter. So I want to just sort of work into this a little bit and start blending it in. Um, so I've got a couple of things. I've got a paintbrush that I've just sort of dried off and I've got this little stubby stenciling brush. And whilst I've got some of that paint mixed, I'm just going to grab some of my bits of ephemera and just add some of that onto some little bits. So what I'm doing is just getting some tiny little bits of ephemera in the same color as that. So let that dry. So I'm going to just dot some of those bits onto the rest of the page to sort of tie those colours together. And I've got a stencil. So I'm going to start blending some of the white from the photo onto the rest of the page. So I'm going to use some acrylic paint this time rather than the gesso because it's easier to stencil with acrylic paint rather than the gesso. So I'm just rubbing that, getting it onto my brush, keeping the brush reasonably dry. I don't want it to be sort of drenched in it. And I'm just going to start sort of gently brushing around the edge of the photo so that it starts to blend it into the rest of the page. So you can immediately see that that's sort of softened that edge. And I'm just going to do that all around I'm going to stick a little bit more paint. And then just with these little bits that I've painted, where did I put my scissors? Oh, I bet they're somewhere obvious, but I can't see them. I'll use these ones instead. So I'm just going to glue down Thingy. these little green bits that just make the the dress sort of blend in so I'm just going to stick one over here and I'll put one up here and that immediately just sort of pulls the page together because we've got the three colours We've got three pieces that are working in a triangle and that kind of helps the eye travel around the page. And then I'll do a bit more with this white just to sort of blend the photo 
into the page. And then I'm going to use this stencil and I'm just going to take the white across. And I'm really lightly just stenciling into some of the sections of the stencil. So you can see it's just sort of pulled that white across and kind of just connects the photo to the rest of the page. So I'm just going to go over and do a few more, trying to line the stencil up. Okay. And that, I think, is as much as I'm going to do. So the last thing that I might do on that, if I can find it, is I have a little um, pack of words. So these are things that I've just cut out of books. I've got loads more somewhere, but during my studio move, I've not found them yet. Um, so these are really random things that I've cut out. I'm not afraid. Um, smiled and agreed. They're little bits of stories. So, um, what was that one? It was spring again, that's quite nice. It does my heart good, that's a nice one. I think I might use that. They're just random things, but they're kind of starts of stories. So we don't know who this person was. We can see that she looks happy. Um, these random words, it does my heart good. It's it kind of the start of a story. And then you can use your imagination and fill in the gaps. You know, who was she? What was the circumstances? What was it that was making her heart feel good? Um, and it's just a really nice, positive little page, really. We all want our hearts to feel good, don't we? So let's get a glue stick. And that is going there. So that is it. That was what I wanted to show you. So it's a nice, simple journal page. And it's a technique that you can use. So if you want to use photos in your journals, you can make them part of the page. You can make them blend in and be part of your artwork. Be the start of a story in your journal. If you want to use photos of your own family. Um, you know, you can you can honour them by actually creating them as artworks rather than just photos that are sort of sitting there on the page. Right, have we got any questions? Let's have a look. I'm going to attempt to turn the camera back again now. Kind of see the top of my head, but let's have a look. Now the sun's really come out. Oh, now you're missing the top of my head. Never mind, you're never going to get all of me. So um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Let's have a little quick look at the questions. Uh, working with photos this way is all new to me. I'm going to watch the recording a couple of times. Lovely, that's great. Amy, we have just under 10 minutes for more questions and info. That's okay, Amy, I'm on it. Um, I learned so much from your demo. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, Delina, I think. Yes. A fabulous lesson. Never gotten so much done in a live. That was, uh, we did rush. We did get a lot done there, didn't we? What, what I would really love is anybody that's um, been making as you go along or who makes something with old photos um, using what you've learned in the lesson. If you're on Instagram, do tag me at Jane Chip because I would absolutely love to see what you make. Um, you know, I'm always delighted when I can see that people have got something from the lesson and um, made their own and interpreted it in their own way and maybe found a way to use photos that you perhaps wouldn't have done before. So please do do share with me. Um, any questions? I don't think so. Um, no, I think we're all good. So unless anybody's got any questions, if you have, pop them in there really, really quickly. Um, because otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye. So let's have a quick look. Really enjoyed. If you'd like to share, 
do you use laser printer for photos? Um, I don't, but that's simply because the printer that I've got is an inkjet printer. Um, I don't know whether I ever have used a laser jet for, to print onto photo paper. I don't see why you couldn't. Um, I can't see at all why you, you wouldn't be able to, but I, I do use an inkjet simply because that's what I've got. Um, where do you get your old papers from? Oh, gosh. Um, again, the same as the photos, really. Flea markets, uh, auctions from house clearance. Um, in the UK, we have something called car boot sales, which is, um, I guess it might be a bit like a yard sale, I think, or a garage sale. Is that what you have in the States? Anywhere that people are getting old, rid of old junk. Um, charity shops or thrift shops. Um, I just look out for it and, and friends look out for it for me as well. So any kind of yellowing old papers, um, yeah, people sort of give them to me. I think if you put the word out there, people will find stuff that, you know, there might be stuff in your own attic even. Um, Jane found has almost completed her page. Uh, that's good. So hopefully we'll see that. Do you have, do you have plasters on putting your journals together? Tracy, yes, I do. If you go on to my website um there's details about some zoom classes so um take a look over there and i'll show you how i make the journals um anything else thank you for fabulous thank you very much emily thank you debbie thank you everybody okay so unless there's any more questions i think that's probably it um so just to reiterate again this was part of wanderlust live um, if you haven't signed up already for the full year of, of lessons like this, so I'm doing a lesson again about using old photos. This was just a sort of taster. Um, 49 lessons. Uh, the early bird price is £99. They've already sold out of the first 2,000 slots of £99, or at dollars, not pounds, um, and released an extra 1,000. So these are selling like hotcakes. So if you're thinking about it, jump quick um, so that you can get the bargain price. The link is in the description beneath my video. Um, if you use that link, that would be great. It will take you to the right place and it will give me a little bit of money, like I said, to buy some more old photographs. So I think that's it. Um, yeah, Amy's just put some details in the chat. Um, looking forward to 2024 20, Yvonne yes so am I um, and it's been an absolute joy to teach you all um, so do please share what you've made because I would just love to see it so if you're sticking around for the rest of the sessions there's loads of amazing stuff to come um, and I will be watching some of them so you'll probably see me in the chat as well so if I can find my mouse there it is I shall end the live stream thanks very much everybody goodbye